remember telling you people when white people get fed up, they go fight back. And when they fight back, it won't be pretty. You don't want to call them racist and want to call them every name under God's green earth. That kid in Kenosha is just the start. They're going to get fed up. And when they get fed up, they outnumber you. Do not forget that it was people like this that stood up to the British. They had an army. These were just villagers who were fed up. You can only push the American people around so much, BLM. I would not like to be you in a couple of months if you keep this crap up. Ooh, it's gonna be bad. You think a blown bicep with a bullet is bad. You think one person shot in the stomach is bad. You think losing your cap is bad. Wait until every last one of you gets put down. I'm just gonna sit on the sidelines with my popcorn and watch. I might join in, but I will definitely be watching. <clears throat> I might even put on let the bodies hit the floor because this is gonna be good. We tried to warn you, do not push the American around. True patriots will stand up, and when they stand up, you go down. The British learned the hard way, and I guess y'all stubborn morons need to learn the same way. You step on the wrong porch with this, raise your fist for BLM. Well, he gonna raise something. He will be raising something to you. Yes, sounds like pew pew. And you'll be getting more than a few few. <clears throat> Alright, Shalom. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem Yahushua, Bashem Kakadash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone because those are the men who I learned the truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahushua. Yahweh is the true name of the God of Israel. Yahweh Shah is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one and only true name is Yahweh Shah. And um, pretty much, you know, whether you think the dude might be a tear, you know, um, you have a lot of, and mainly it's according to Zechariah 13 and um, 8, you know, two thirds of the nation of Israel is going to be destroyed. Why? Because they follow the way of the heathen. You know, they take on the philosophies and customs of the heathens, which pissed the Heavenly Father off because he gave us, the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, the law, statutes, and commandments, which is our wisdom in the sight of the nations. All right? But um, you have a lot of so-called Negroes, you know, and of our people, so-called Hispanics, Native American Indians, that... They adopted this mindset of if you can't beat them, you join them. You know, the average so-called Negro has no idea of what's going on in the world and why things are the way it is. You know, they don't understand, you know, two-thirds of them for the most part. They don't want to understand and they don't understand that there's a reason behind everything. There's a reason why you went into slavery. There's a reason why you, a particular sea line of people, is getting humiliated in all kinds. There's a reason for that. You know, they, they don't understand that. So they have this weak, westernized mindset, and they don't see a world beyond the so-called white man, which he's not white, you know. The so-called white man and his sea line are the Edomites that you read about in the Bible. They are the true descendants of Esau, whose name was changed to Edom. And a lot of our people worship these people as the Heavenly Father. They worship these people as the Messiah. They think this is the form of beauty. They hate themselves based off of Edomite supremacy, so-called white supremacy. So any guy that's thinking like that, you know, the most high, if you don't repent and get yourself right, if you are an Israelite, you know, you're going to be put to death. 
by one of the various different plagues that the Lord has. All right, because it's enough, it's enough already. But what he said is biblical, and I'm going to show you. All right, this is um, Genesis 4 and 15. And another thing is, you know, you have a lot of older, you know, people that's up in age that think like that. You know, they have a weak mindset. They don't stand for nothing. This is Genesis 4 and 15. And the Lord, you know, whenever you see the word Lord in caps, it's always going to be Strong's H 3068, talking about the God of Israel, Yahweh. It says, said unto him, therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. Now, when you understand the scriptures, the Bible does deal with reincarnation. All right, pursuant to Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. All the spirits, meaning the people that you see walking around here today, all right, all of us have been here before because you come back in the flesh, reincarnation back in the flesh, all right? So what you people need to understand is whether you want to believe it or not, the same thing applies to, you know, prophets and certain men that you read about in the scriptures. One of them being Cain, which if you can receive it, Cain, Cain came back as Esau. And when he was born as Esau, he had a mark placed upon him. And here's the thing. This is some I'm, I'm stuff on the top. Genesis 4 and 15. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slave Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. All right. And this didn't kick in until when he came back. As Esau, if you do anything to the so-called white man, he's going to bomb your country. All right. He's going to destroy y'all. You know, you can't fight back against him. This is why the Israelites need divine intervention, you know, by Yahweh Shah to come back and deliver the elect of the nation of Israel to give us power to take down our enemies. All right. Because you being carnal is going to lead to this curse kicking in. Of whoever touch of Cain, which Cain came back as Esau, vengeance will be taken on you sevenfold. Look at black, look at Black Wall Street. All right, look at the the different example. Look at Emmett Till. He ain't even do nothing. All right, but but look at him though. You know, if you if you think you're gonna take these Edomite on, and they with their blessing, and their type of technology that they have, all right, you will fool. And you're going to, you're asking and you're tempting death. It says, and the Lord set a mark upon Cain, least any find of him should kill him. Now we go into this word mark in Genesis 14 and 15, right? Let's listen to it. Strong's H226. Oath. Oath. All right, oath. Which it says, a sign, signal, a distinguishing mark, a banner, a remembrance, a miraculous sign, an omen, a warning, a token, enzyme, standing, miracle proof. All right, this mark came back on um, Cain when he came back as Esau. All right, Esau was born with this mark. All right, he was born with a distinguishing mark. He didn't have pink dictation. All right. Because everybody back during that time, you know, they were, they were dark skinned. They were people of color. Even the serpent, which was an actual man, he had skin color. All right? This mark that was placed on Cain, when he came back as Esau, it was on him. All right? And that's a miraculous sign, even up to this day. It's a banner. It's a distinguishing mark. It's something that stands out. All right? It's something that's obvious, you know, to the eye. If somebody doesn't have pigmentation, you know, that's something to look at, all right? So this is what happened to Cain, you know? He, he didn't have pigmentation because everybody during that time, they did have pigmentation, right? Because it, tell, it tells you in the scriptures, right? We all come from Adam. We're Adam going back to the Hebrew word Adama, which means, you know, the ground, all right? Everybody comes from the ground right your bodies you know you look at the soil and the dirt is different shades of brown all right so the so this distinguish a mark this miraculous sign all right this this warning that if you touch this individual 
that what vengeance was going to be taken on you sevenfold you know it's talking about the pigmentation because Cain had his pigmentation stripped away from him all right so it says upon Cain at least any find him should kill him all right because he, he killed his brother all right he killed Abel and this is a curse that came upon the nation of Israel for breaking the law, statutes, and commandments. This is Leviticus 26 and 17. Because remember, it tells you in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 49 and 50, that what? That the Lord was going to raise up a nation as swift as the eagle flies. We know who that's talking about. First and foremost, it's talking about the Roman Empire. But it's also talking about the Edomites even right now. Because they're in power. That's their symbol, the eagle, as swift as the eagle flies. Anyways, Leviticus 26 and 17, it says, and I will, let me see, I just want to get to the point. All right, I saw that 17. Leviticus 26 and 17, I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemy. This is what's going on on the news. This is an everyday thing. Male, male and female of our people getting killed. It says, they that hate you, who hate us, first and foremost? The Edomites, going back to Genesis 27 and 41. All right, Esau hated his brother. That's a sea line thing. All right, the sea line of Edom hates the sea line of Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. So it says, and they that hate you reign over you, which is who? The 17 heathen nations. It says, and ye shall flee when none pursue of you. Yep, we flee out of Jerusalem, right? We, we was fleeing Roman persecution. And then we ended up in, in the interiors of Africa. All right? So that's what happened. We was fleeing the Romans. He tells you that in the book from Babylon to Timbuktu on page 84, that it was estimated that one million so-called black Jews, you know, fled. They fled into Africa. So it says... Verse 18, and if ye were not for all this hearken unto me, how do you how do you as an Israelite hearken unto the Lord by listening to the prophets? Who are his prophets today? The apostles of GMS and the brothers of Great Millstone. So if we don't hearken unto the Lord, because that's how the Lord speaks, alright? Hawking unto somebody meaning you want to listen to what they gotta say. You know, you're listening to their message. You're you're digesting the message mentally and now you're going to do what's positive according to the message you heard so it says and if you will not if ye will not yet for all this hogging unto me then will I punish you seven times more for your sins alright so that's what's going on that's why you see our people constantly getting gunned down the crime rate is high it's high in Philly Chicago even in New York Brooklyn you know, South Bronx, all over the world, all right? Crime is, is high. And the Lord is punishing us because, you know, we're the people he made the covenants with, all right? And we broke the old covenant. So that's why we went into slavery. You know, that's why we get treated the way how we get treated. That's why we can't completely unify as a people because you have righteousness, which is set against wickedness, all right? And the Lord is only dealing with the elect of the nation of Israel anyway. So this is Second Corinthians 10 and 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Hebrew Israelites are not supposed to be carnal. You know, we quote the scriptures, you read out the Bible, that's it. We read some books that's references towards a particular scripture, you know, dealing with secular history or prophecy, and that's it. We ain't out here to pick a fight. You know what I'm saying? Show people how much muscles we got be be tough guys the lord said we sheep all right amongst wolves you do something stupid to somebody trying to start a fight and they could blow your head off you know they could jump you you know they could do all kind of shit and the lord will allow it why because you have the wisdom and, and you ain't use it so it says the weapons of a whiff warfare are not carnal to be carnal is doing something according to the flesh all right the opposite of being spiritual it says but mighty through the Most High, Yahweh by Shemel Shai, to the pulling down of strongholds. All right, and that's what spirit, being spiritual, 
you know, knowing the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, you know, from the apostles of Great Millstone through the spirit of Yahweh, that what we pulled down strongholds, you know, these philosophies and the lies and deception of society, you know, which the so called white man, the Edomites, have pushed out all over the world. So this truth is powerful. This is um, Romans 8 and 5. It says, For they that are after the flesh do minor things after the flesh. And that's what being carnal means, doing things after the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Right? And that's why our brothers go out week in and week out when they prophesy the downfall of Babylon the Greek. This is why we do our videos, our live streams. It says, for to be cornerly minded is death. If you niggas really think y'all gonna go outside, you know, <laughs> and think you're gonna take down the Edomites with their blessing, their technology, their system, their government, which, if I'm not mistaken, the word government, and go back to the word pit, all right? If you think you're gonna take down this system, with, which is only meant to oppress us, you, you're sadly mistaken, all right? We're supposed to wait upon Yahweh Shai. And until Yahweh Shai comes, we're supposed to prophesy the downfall of Babylon the Great. If they want to come and persecute us and, and throw us in prison or jail, so let it be. All right? Scriptures tell you that this it was going to happen. Revelation 2 and 10. And Matthew chapter 5, it says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is is life and peace. So that's life and peace. All right, you being spiritual, you know, that's going to lead to what? Peace. Which we're only going to get peace once Yahweh Shah comes back and once the kingdom of heaven is established. Then we're going to have peace. Then Isaiah 2 and 4 is going to kick in where it says, you know, nations are not going to pick up weapons no more and fight, roughly paraphrasing. Because there ain't going to be no more wars, world wars. There ain't going to be none of that. They're going to have the, the heathen nations in the kingdom of heaven. You know, the nations outside of the nation of Israel, they're going to go into slavery. They're going to have to keep our law, statutes, and commandments. According to Isaiah 16, 12. <coughs> Verse 7, it says, because the carnal mind is enmity. Something that's enmity, it calls disdain to the Most High. Meaning it's something that the God of Israel hates. So the heavenly father hates a carnal man. You know, a guy that think he gonna kick everybody ass, especially a guy with the wisdom, you know, that's being carnal, all right? So it says, but because the carnal mind's enmity, because you have a lot of dudes that's fools out here. You know, they do a lot of foolish things. Like you had the guy, he was getting arrested. He was screaming out for the name of the Lord. The scriptures tell you don't, don't um, call upon the name of the Lord in vain, all right? You can't, you know, you're not asking for nothing spiritual. You're just being vain. You're doing something stupid. You're doing something carnal. And then you, you're you going to cry out to the Lord. You know, that's, that's that's stupid. It says, because the carnal mind is enmity against the Most High, for it is not subject to the law of the Most High, neither indeed can it be. So then they that are after the flesh cannot please the Most High. Because ultimately, like it says, you being carnally, Minded and being carnal is going to lead to death. You can't glorify the Lord if you're dead. All right? But I just want to do a video on that. I'm going to just finish this. It's a finite three and eight. Therefore, therefore, wait ye upon me, say the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prayer. So this is where our power is going to lie. This is our power source. Yahweh Shai, he's coming back to bring us those new bodies. In First Corinthians, the 15th chapter. All right? So that's what we're waiting on. Power to take down our enemies. The reward for glorifying the Heavenly Father and His Son. It says, to the day that I rise up to the prey. Who's the prey? The heathen nations. The 17 heathen nations. For my determination, meaning this is what Yahweh wants. This is what the Heavenly Father wants. Is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms. Right? Assemble them to what? World War III. Revelation 11 and 14. To pour upon them. Right? my indignation the lord's righteous anger because it's prophesied and spoken about by the mouth for the prophets because the, the words of the lord they don't go avoid it says 
even all my fierce anger. And all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. So Babylon the Great, which is America, is going to be destroyed. And once the smoke clears, it's going to become, you know, a desert, according to uh, Revelation 18 and 2. All right. And Isaiah 13, I think it talks about it, you know, as well. All right. But then you're going to have different parts of the world that's on fire. All right. And the heathens, like it tells you in the book of Ezekiel, how they, how they shall seek out men with continual um, employment. So these heathen nations, beginning with the Edomites, they're going to have to bury those dead bodies. They're going to have to clean up everything. All you heathen nations. All right. So I just want to do a video, you know. Just want to do a video. Shout out.